Hi, welcome back to the course on Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. And we are covering a chapter where we are trying to find out about cloud forensics. We covered up to service line agreements in our previous lecture and we'll be talking about the technical challenges in cloud forensics. Now, cloud forensics procedures combine many computing networking tasks such as the data recovery, network analysis to detect intrusion, detection, etc., database administration, security software, um, and the uh, international relations which are there in continuation with the cloud forensics. Since there are lots of customers which are sharing the same cloud data or the cloud service providers, uh, they must uh, have proper mechanisms so that the data is segregated between the parties. Um, whenever anything like that happens, uh, a, a cloud service provider uh, response team should uh, have its own forensics tools to, uh, to investigate it. If not that, the um, the owner or whoever is uh, uh, using that virtual machine, their own uh, forensics teams must consider uh, doing their own initial investigations. It's very important that both parties should have procedures and resources in place to handle any kind of penetrations, etc. Now, NIST has developed a forensic science working group uh, following the list of the challenges in the cloud computing, and some of these challenges are discussed more in details uh, like architecture, data collection, analysis of cloud forensics data, anti-forensics, incident first responders, role management, legal issues, and the standards and trainings. So in order to understand architecture, we must understand that all service providers have their own rules and regulations and their architecture the way they are configured. Depending on the type of the cloud architecture, customers' data might be uh, commingled uh, uh, making it difficult to sort out the data which is related to them only. Um, so it takes some time in order to uh, distinguish the data between one customer to another. Identifying the data storage location can be a problem as well. You'll have to locate exactly where is your data stored, whether it's stored in the same continent or for security purposes you are saving it somewhere else because most ESPs uh, keep these locations secret for the security reasons so that um, uh, people are not aware of it. And uh, if any penetration takes place, it, it becomes a little bit ambiguous for the guys, especially the hackers who are trying to locate the data of the customers. In addition to the difference in the recording procedures, the lock keeping can make it difficult to determine the data original and complicate the investigation chain of evidence. Next is analyzing uh, uh, the cloud forensics data. Uh, analyzing uh, digital evidence collecting from the cloud requires verifying the data with other data logs and records. You might, you might need to reconstruct the data to determine whether it actually occurred during the incident or compare the network records uh, to make sure the server's internal clocks are synchronized correctly. Examining the logs can be useful to compare the modified last access, uh, create the MAC addresses and their dates when they were accessed. Metadata from the affected files should be examined too to validate the file access. All this information is used to build the uh, timeline to show what happened when the incident occurred. Now, anti-forensics plays an important role because uh, anti-forensics tools or the tactics should be used in the cloud environment as well as in the network environment. Hackers might uh, obfuscate the incriminating files or hide them by simple techniques by changing the file extensions. That's a typical thing which happens that in order to um, hide the files to be identified by the anti-malware softwares, they are changing the extensions of the files so that they become unreadable but they'll be able to use it or activate it whenever they want to um, again come back to the same servers and launch the attacks. Specialized malware for defeating the evidence collecting can add time to an investigation and result in the loss of the valuable evidence. Whenever we are using different softwares in order to read the information on the softwares which are being uh, encrypted or being changed, uh, there are specialized softwares used for that. There are still there are chances that the data would be modified. 
Addition, additional methods for anti forensics include inserting malware programs in other files using encryption to obfuscate the malware programs, activating through other malware programs, or using data hiding techniques or the utilities. Uh, that uh, that might append the malware uh, to the existing data. Other techniques affect the metadata by changing or modify the last access date times. Changing the timestamps can make it difficult to uh, develop a timeline of hackers' activities, calculating hash values and the files, and then comparing the results with the known good files, hash files, uh, to identify that might what might have been altered. But that takes a lot of time. Provided that you might have collected the initial hash of the uh, server or the machine in order to make sure um, that uh, these are the files which are being modified or not. Otherwise, there is uh, um, no point of uh, checking the data when you have the actual hash of it that whether the data has been modified or not. And that's what they are talking about, uh, calculating the hash files and then the uh, incident first uh, responders. CSPs are personal trained to respond to the network incident. They become the first responders when the network intrusion happens and then the uh, cloud service provider do not have the internal first responders team. The forensics examiners should organize a CSP staff to handle these kind of things. Now the CSP operation staff in, cooperative, in cooperation with the local team will follow directions and uh, um, um, will manage the issue or the orders from the higher management in order to report uh, that what's, what's going on. Uh, they really need to brief the staff about the operation security. For example, um, they might need to talk that what information shall be shared uh, with uh, home and the incident of the investigation activities. They also need to train the staff for the evidence or the collection of the procedures plus the uh, chain of custody that who must have the information. The next is uh, role management over here. Role management in the cloud covers the data owners, identify the protection, uh, users access controls, list of the access privileges and restrictions for each user um, and so forth. As an investigator, you need to collect this information so that you can identify additional victims or suspects. Identify protection, for example, means you need to determine whether sensitive personal identifiable information was compromised, which broadens the investigation scope. You might also need to determine whether a PII compromise was uh, intentional or accidental, and knowing the cloud user's access permissions can help um, in this task. Next is standards and training. There is an effort to standardize the cloud architecture for operation procedures, interoperability, uh, testing, and validation. The Cloud Security Alliance, which is CSA, has developed resources documentation of CSP and their staff. But since uh, the technology is constantly changing, there have been lots of changes in it. And they are coming up with the new techniques which hackers are using. And uh, uh, according to that, they are standardizing their own architecture, whether it's about the data storage, whether it's about the overall architecture of the uh, cloud service providers. Every cloud service provider has their own investigative team based on that. They have developed their own procedures in order to understand and in order to validate the data in case if anything happens. Cloud investigators should have an understanding of the cloud architecture in addition to the basic digital and network forensics um, analysis or the skills. Um, the sources for the cloud forensics trainings are um, certified cyber forensics professional. If you're interested, you can check these and then the InfoSec uh, Institutes and Cloud uh, Forensics with F-Response and the National Institute for uh, Just a Digital Forensics Training and the University College of Dublin Center for Cybersecurity and Cybercrime Investigations. Now, this topic is very important when they are talking about encryption in the cloud. Many cloud service providers and third parties offer encryption services for the cloud users as a secure, uh, security mechanism. Uh, expect to find encrypted files in the cloud investigations. Of course, uh, if your data is stored in the cloud on the servers which are not owned by you, uh, most of the organizations are really skeptical about having their own things uh, to be stored on the servers. Um, so most of the 
cloud service providers are investing um, are constantly encrypting the data and in order to investigate that you need to have the decryption key from the uh, cloud service provider or you'll have to ask them that what kind of encryption are they using you need assistance from the data owner or the cloud service provider to decrypt the data with the right encryption key in order um, if the data owner is uncooperative you may need to turn to the attorney in handling the case and the data owner management etc encrypted data in the cloud has two steps data is on rest means that the data has been written to the disk and the second is data is in motion data is being transmitted over the network uh, some system also have the encryption of the data that use uh, the data which is in the RAM. If encrypted data is encountered, first find out from the cloud service provider what kind of encryption is used and uh, who knows how to recover the data from there. Most of the um, um, cloud service providers, of course, it's, it's, it's their business. They are constantly checking the de and, and decrypting the data themselves on testing purposes. So they know that uh, what they are doing and uh, what's the fastest and the easiest way in order to decrypt the data. Vendor that offers the encryption services for the cloud data are Itala Cloud Encryption, Secure Cloud, or the Safeguard Encryption with the help of which they are um, encrypting the data on their uh, their servers. Now they are talking about homomorphic and, uh, encryption and blockchain technology. There are two different kind of encryption methods. Uh, yani only two out of the very well known encryption mechanisms which are out there. Uh, blockchain is the latest one which is evolving with the passage of time and it's been uh, uh, really successful so far. It's used by the companies such as Bitcoin in a way to trace the information while keeping it secure as well. Now conducting cloud investigation is when investigating cloud incidents use a systematic approach just like we have covered in chapter number one. Um, the type of the incident determines how the procedure or the planning should be for the investigation. The investigation involves searching for the recovering the data from the cloud storage of the customer data. Follow the methods uh, which were discussed in the earlier chapters as well. In all of these, uh, the first and the most important thing is to secure the data where uh, we'll have to make sure that whatever we are doing, it's not going to write the data on the disk. So um, in the cloud storage or in the virtualized environment, it's really simple to get the snapshots of the current state of the servers. With the help of that, you are pretty confident that the data has not been changed or uh, you have the actual uh, copy of the data with the snapshots possible. Investigating CSV cloud service providers. If a CSP has no team or limited staff, investigators should ask the following questions to understand how the CSP is set up. Uh, these questions would help you in uh, streamlining your investigation. Does the investigator have the authority to use the cloud staff or the resources to conduct an investigation? Further, um, is detailed knowledge of the cloud topology, policies, data storage methods, etc. is available? Third thing is, are there any restrictions on collecting the digital evidence from the remote uh, cloud storage? As we discussed that the rules and regulations are different in different countries. So uh, you must be aware of all these things before they conduct the initial investigations. In investigators should also ask the following questions to understand how CSP is set up. For the e-discovery demands of multi-tenant cloud systems, is there data to collect the uh, commingled with other cloud customers, unrelated data, is there any way to separate the data to prevent the uh, violating the privacy rights and the confidentiality agreement since uh, the other customers are also sharing the services provided by the same cloud service provider. It's very important to um, uh, segregate the data between uh, customers in order to conduct the investigative analysis. Um, is the data of interest to the investigation local or remote or if the remote location can uh, the cloud service provider or the forensically sound connection to it, how easy it, is it to uh, reach that data which is stored in the cloud. If a customer, if a cloud customer doesn't have the CSP application installed, you might uh, find the cloud related evidence in the web browser cache file, but there will be a very limited information will be appearing over there. 
if the csv application is installed you can find the evidence of the file transfer in the application folder usually found under the user account folder plus you can investigate it from the network analysis as well that uh, how much data and files were transferred from uh, one location to the other now there are some prefetch files in windows uh, which helps us in in understanding what data was transferred uh, and uh, what resided on the ram and the files which were created date stamps and stuff like that prefetch files contains the dll path names and the metadata by the applications the operating system reads associated prefetch files load the information into the computer memory and speed up the application start time so it would be constantly checking the data from the prefetch which has been accessed recently in order to boost the process the operating system can handle other tasks instead of uh, waiting for the application to need um, uh, to load the needed libraries for example, the metadata in the prefetch files contains the application's MAC times, UTC formats, counter, how many times it has been opened, last access time, when it was executed, and all those relevant details about uh, um, the files. As you can see in this one, they are trying to explain the timestamp for the data which was created and the last access date and uh, the date uh, when it was modified and the record date when it was created over there and the number of times the application has been executed again using a bin hex code we are trying to understand it otherwise from a clear text you cannot understand what's uh, what's actually written on it now we'll be talking about examining the uh, the cloud storage data i think that's it for today uh, we'll be covering rest of the material in our next lecture thank you very much